Welcome to this video on creating a narrated PowerPoint presentation brought to you by the Center for Pedagogical Innovation at Brock University. There's a number of really important reasons for why creating a narrated PowerPoint presentation is a preferred method for online teaching. First of all, it makes the video flexible for your students so that they can watch it at their own pace and at multiple times. It also means that you're going to be able to show your students visuals in your PowerPoint along with uploading your voice or demonstrations in the PowerPoint which means you're going to be representing the information you want to convey using a universal design for learning approach, which the Center for Pedagogical Innovation can support you with further. It helps to build instructor presence in your course so that your students are able to hear your voice and know that there's a real person behind the lessons that they're engaging in. So let's get started. You can use an existing PowerPoint presentation in order to record your narration. Once you're happy with your PowerPoint, you're going to go to the top toolbar and select Slideshow. From here, click on Record Slideshow, and you have the option of either recording from the beginning or recording from the current slide. If you have a really long slide deck, you might want to consider chunking the information into shorter, more manageable components. This will make it easier for you to record and as well for your students to engage with for two reasons. First, it'll break up the information into more manageable chunks, which we know supports learning. And second, for students who have limited bandwidth or are streaming on a mobile device, shorter videos will be, will be much easier to access for them. So for our purposes, let's click on record from the beginning. So you'll be brought to a new area where you'll be able to narrate and record your PowerPoint presentation. In the top left-hand corner, you have the record button, stop and replay. These are basic features that'll allow you to navigate through the recording. You also have the toggle buttons on the left and right of your PowerPoint presentation, which appears in the middle. You can use those or you can use the toggle buttons on your keyboard. In the bottom right hand corner, there's three icons. You can choose to mute your microphone if that's something that you want to do. Um, for instance, if you're showing a video in your PowerPoint presentation, you might want to mute your microphone uh, while the video is playing. You can also choose to turn your webcam on or off. If you turn your webcam on, a small inset will appear on the bottom right of your PowerPoint that'll show your face or whatever else is appearing on your webcam. This can be a really great way for your students to actually see you as their instructor uh, and see your facial expressions as part of the PowerPoint. Last but not least, you have the pen and the highlighter tool that allow you to actually write on the slide um, using different colors. This can come in really handy when you're doing demonstrations, which I'll show you in a minute. You can use the eraser tool right down here to erase anything that you've added. So let's get started. We'll click on the record button and it'll count us down into the recording. At this point, anything that we say is being recorded and we can see that the timer is being kept in the bottom left so that we know how much time we're spending on each slide. We can advance through our slides like we normally would. And if at any point you reach a slide where you wanna pause and add some demonstrations using the pen or highlighter button, you can simply use those at the bottom of the screen so this is an example where you might want to consider adding some information to this image that appears on this PowerPoint slide. So for example, we could add the numbers one, two, and three, so that students know where on this image the information that appears in the text on the slide corresponds to. Another example here is this diagram that we've included. We might want to discuss some features of different components of the slide, so we might want to use the highlighter button to really reinforce to students what it is that we're talking about as we're moving through our narration and the diagram. So for instance, if I'm talking about the cell body, I might highlight exactly where that is on the diagram. When I move on to talk about the dendrites, I can highlight that and again, highlight for my students exactly where those appear on the diagram. This can be really helpful to support student learning in an online environment. If at any point during your presentation you want to pause, you can use the top left menu option of pause here. That'll pause your recording and you can simply click on record when you're ready to begin again. Once you've completed your recording, click on stop and the narration is now complete. You can use the close button in the top right hand corner to return back to your PowerPoint slides. You'll now see that this volume icon appears in the bottom right hand corner of each of your slides, which indicates that the narration has been recorded. At this point, you're going to want to export your narrated PowerPoint as a video. In order to do that, you can click on File and then Export. Create a video is the option that you're going to want to choose and think very carefully about the size of the video that you want to export. 
Again, remember that some students will have limited bandwidth or maybe watching multiple videos as part of their online learning. So selecting a small or medium sized file can certainly help those students make sure that they're making the most of their internet access. As well, make sure from the next drop down menu that use recorded timings and narration is selected so that any demonstrations that you included and the voiceover are included as part of the video. Once you're happy with your selections, you can click on create video and save it somewhere on your computer where you'll be able to find it later. Let's save it here uh, to the desktop. You can see in the bottom that the video is rendering, which can take a bit of time depending on the length of the video uh, and the size that you choose to make it. Again, this is why we recommend doing smaller videos in shorter chunks of five to 10 minutes and choosing to render them on a lower quality. Once your video has been rendered, you can upload it to Echo 360, Brock's video streaming platform, so that it's accessible to your students on Sakai. We recommend before doing this to get in touch with the CPI team at edtech at brocku.ca to request that captioning is added over your narrated PowerPoint. This will make sure that students are able to read whatever it is that you said over the PowerPoint, an important consideration for all students in your class, but particularly for those with accessibility needs. Let me show you now how to actually upload videos in Echo. Once you log into Sakai and go to your course site, you'll see in the left-hand toolbar whether or not the videos tool has been enabled. It'll say videos, but if you don't see that, click on site info, manage tools, and then scroll right down to the bottom of the menu, clicking on external tools, where you're going to find video at the bottom of the list. By selecting video, clicking continue and finish, the videos tool will now be available to you. When you click on videos, this will bring you into Brock's Echo 360 platform. The easiest way to upload your video to your Echo 360 library is to click on the Echo icon that you'll see at the top left of the screen. From here, you can use the upload button. And by clicking on that, it'll allow you to select a file from your computer. So you can now go to wherever you saved your narrated PowerPoint, open it, and then again, click upload. It'll now begin the upload of your video to Echo 360. This can take a moment, so we'll pause for a moment while the video uploads. Once the file has uploaded successfully, you can click the close button. By clicking on the all content tab, you'll see that your video now appears in your library. It'll take a few minutes to process, but don't worry, you'll be able to add it to your lessons while it's doing this. So let's go ahead and embed this into a lesson. So we have our lessons in the left toolbar, and from here, what we can do is find the place where we want to add the video and click the edit button. In the text box, we'll simply click on this Echo 360 button that you'll find in the text editor. And it'll bring us back into our Echo 360 library. And there's the video that we created just now as a narrated PowerPoint. And we can click on insert and it will insert it as an iframe into our text. Click on save. And now the video is ready for your students to access and they can play it right in the lessons page. They don't have to go anywhere else. I hope that you found this video on how to narrate a PowerPoint presentation and upload it into Sakai helpful. If you require additional support, please feel free to get in touch with a member of the CPI team at cpi at and we'd be happy to support you. All the best with your online teaching.